Okay, so what we got here is just the hind wing of a, a new species of dragonfly, and um, that's exceptional sort of preservation. Again, so lucky because that was found in what in the year 1987 when they had hurricane force winds, and what it did at Cambridge, it ripped meters of cliff out, and a lot of the cliff cliff profile is all oxidized, so you can't collect that of it any and it's a dangerous thing to do. But what it had done is ripped out huge great blocks of this. Um, sediment and deposit all over the sea floor or at the top of the beach and um, the seas were so rough that you couldn't collect except for the sort of just at the base of the cliff so what I did was one day was I went down there and just split every sort of block up to try and find out all the smaller stuff that you find which is actually a good way of finding you know fossils in those sort of sediments but I was using a bolster and I split this thing and blown me down it instantly that I've not prepped it at all that's how it came out there were two the slab the that slab and the counterpart of that basically just yields this very nice preserved sort of wing. So I got really excited about that thing. Blimey, that's definitely the first insect remains. So I came back the next day and I split up every other block, and what it yielded was what we're going to look at over there. Right, so what it yielded so was this rectangular slab up here. And when I split that, I thought, what's oh, strange? This is sort of some egg-like structures. So when I got it home, it was New Year's Eve, I remember that, and when everyone was getting piled at 12 o'clock, I was under a microscope with a little pig just cleaning around these eggs. And yeah, under a microscope, they're definitely eggs. They look really nice. They had a sort of nacreous luster to them, and they look like they're sort of laid in strings. Got quite excited by it, and then started trying to reference to find out what these things were. And basically, my son, he wasn't that old, he had a book on marine sort of organisms and everything else, he was mad on marine life. So I thumbing through that and came across cephalopods, reproduction cycles and everything else and instantly got this clue because the shape of the cuttlefish eggs were identical to these. Although these eggs are only 2 mil across, cuttlefish eggs are about 12, 10 mil, something like that. The shape is identical. They're sort of barrel shaped, they're sort of nipple end projecting on the end sort of thing. And I got quite excited because I was thinking, well, hang on, if they're not sort of cuttlefish eggs, what other cephalopod in the Kimbridge and Seas have we got? Now, the only other ones we got really are ammonites. So when you do your research on ammonites, you find that, hang on, no one in the world's found ammonite eggs before. There's a chap called Ulrich Lehman described in his book on, definitive book on the life of ammonites, that they found what they thought was a, a residue of an egg capture inside an ammonite but it was so badly preserved, there was no definition to it. So that was it, that was all, and I got quite excited. So a friend of mine, uh, sadly now died, a professor at Southampton University, um, he worked on fossil north, Michael Hanks, his name was, worked on fossil north lawyers, and he got quite excited. He said, Steve, I think you're right, I think it could be ammonites. What we'll do, we we'll take them to the university, and we'll actually slice them, and if we get a cross section and find the embryos inside, you've proved your point. And I said, well, Michael, I don't really want to do that. If they're rare as what I think they are, you don't really want to destroy them just to prove that they're, they're sort of like my eggs. And I don't know yet. So I said, look, I'm going to go and find some more. And he said, well, I don't think you're going to find too many. And I said, well, I'll keep looking. And I did, actually. I had a field trip out, and a guy, a friend of mine, found a sack of eggs, which he gave to me. He said, look, they just picked these up on a loose block. Nothing to tie them into an ammonite. Because what we're looking for now is evidence to tie them into an ammonite. And it was only when I was collecting a predated block of an ichthyosaur, which got on display down here, that as I was buzzing the, the sediment down just to clean it off, there was a decalcified sort of body chain. The aragonite had been dissolved away, so you had there was the shape of the ammonite shell. And right in association with it, it wasn't a complete ammonite, was a sack of eggs. Now the eggs were small, but the ammonite was quite small. And I thought, ah, it's got to be. It's got to be associated with that ammonite. Now, again, if you're an academic, well, that's not conclusive proof because any can lay its eggs in or under an ammonite, dead ammonite conch, the same as the lobster that's living inside a, a dead ammonite shell. So I had to find more. And then years could pass by, this is a long sort of time period, then I find in the middle one there a much larger cross body chamber of an ammonite with what we got in there, a much larger sack of eggs. So then, using Portsmouth University's facilities, we took two eggs off, 
crack one in half and use a scan electron microscope which yielded beautiful sort of definition and you can see the jelly like layer it was in you could see the egg capsule you could even evidence the fact that inside the sort of egg capsule there's evidence of bacteria that fed on whatever was in there so that was quite good and i was a little bit disappointed because i was hoping to find the embryos but of course when you think about it they're still inside the female at that stage they may have just been fertilized we don't know if she had to lay those eggs externally for the male to fertilize those externally we don't know that process so i wasn't really disappointed and as a colleague that was working with me at that time and said, look, look, should we do a paper on it? I said, yeah, I think we should do. And we drafted this paper, which was okay, um, but it wasn't good enough, really. And so as an academic friend of mine, a chap called um, John Callerman, who's now died again, but he was a world authority on ammonites. And he came on board, I had to prove to him conclusively that's what he thought I thought they were eggs and he, he had to be convinced by that before he came on board, which he did. And he then actually described these um, as other things. So he went through the whole scenario, could it be this, could it be that, could it be this, and filled that paper with that and then came to the conclusion at the end of the day he thought exactly the same as I did, that they were definitely ammonite eggs. Now, during that course of doing that paper, we added another one in because there's a bottom sack of eggs there, which have yielded sort of slightly different features. Um, the egg capsules are the same shape, but on the egg capsules, you've got like tiny little tubercles, which the other ones haven't got. Now, we published that paper with all that evidence, and no one's come back and said, well, we think you're wrong, because I don't think anyone else has found anything else to sort of to come to the conclusion to do their own research. So, it's not finished yet, because I'm still not happy. It would be nice if now, we could take these eggs, we know the middle of them have got embryos inside, but those, those, and I've got more, to actually CAT scan them now. We don't need to section them. CAT scan them, and if we can get a definitive sort of evidence back from that, not only will we have, definitely have the world's first ammonite eggs, but have the world's first embryos as well. So that's the sort of thing that we're doing, actually, hopefully, with Southampton University later on this year. So we'll see, how, we'll see what evidence we get from that when we do it.